So John, while you're, while you're adjusting that last one there, you've got basically an amusement park full of sw sw switch mounts and switches attached to this chair now. So my question for you is... I'm trying to simplify it. <laughs> well, so you've got this switch, this pillow switch here on, on some lock line, which I know that's, that's super handy stuff. And I, I know a lot, of, a lot of folks start off with that. So my, yeah. my question for you is, so if you're just starting off with the child and they're just accessing their switch on a lap tray, let's say they have a switch on a piece of, one switch, two switches on, a, on some Velcro on a lap tray, and they're just learning how to hit their switches. And maybe they go so far as to get some lock line, attach it to a chair so it can be a bit more permanent, and they're, you know, they're, they're really starting to hit their switch well. And they want, them, now they're going to go into um, a chair, maybe it's a power chair. Where do they go from there as far as, as far as moving forward with switches and switch positioning and right. switch mounting? Well, lock line is getting pretty popular now. I find them a bit hard to work with. Um, and, you know, there's the concept that, well, we want to make a switch mount permanent. But I don't believe that there's any real permanent switch mounting site. Huh. Um, I think that there's always a change possible or needed, uh, you know, adjustments. So I try not to use lock line, although it is inexpensive, it's lightweight, um, but you're going to have to, it, it's not going to stay permanent, right? It's got some flex to it, just like a gooseneck. Goosenecks are, are, are pretty good, and they all have their place, of course. They're going to work great for certain kinds of kids, a kid that has too much tone, and, and you need something that's going to be able to, to have some give to it. Um, you might want that. Um, but for permanent... Uh, Permanent switch sites. That's I, I try not to use these. What I try to stick to are the universal mounts, like this one. You got two of them from AbleNet. And, and of course, this is all assuming that we're not going straight to a head array, right? Correct. We're not going Correct. Or, straight or to head array. Even we talked like about. we talked about before. If you need a third, a fourth. Uh, switch now to do right. reverse and stuff, right. then, then this is when you would start incorporating this. Gotcha, okay. Um, this one has a lever that locks it in place. Uh, it's a good one, it's very simple, um, but I find that for power chairs that are trying to move around through space, even this little lever sticks out enough to sometimes impede our ability to even navigate through the door. Oh, wow, gotcha, okay. So I prefer, in most cases, I use this one. It's got the knob, uh -huh. and it, it locks really tight. It never needs an adjustment to it to keep it working. Um, it's got the clamp. You can put it anywhere. And essentially, it becomes like a per, like a, a permanent, again, I, I don't like to say permanent, but <laughs> gotcha. it becomes like a permanent mount. You can easily put this on, tighten this up to a flat surface or a round surface. This right. clamp works on the tray. So you've got that attached. You tube. just got to attach that over. That's on the armrest there, right? That's on the armrest, but you can attach it even to a flat surface. Um, and then you just tighten this knob, and the whole thing goes stiff. I, I really like these. And I use these often. Um, and for guys who are just learning to drive, that you don't want to add all three directions right away. You want them right. to really learn simple cause effect of the movement. Okay. I often will just take something like this with a switch like this one at the end here, and I'll just have them work on stop and go, and they can have a blast doing it. Okay. So what? I, so I just realized that I've just re realized that I'm holding in my hand these proximity switches that you gave me. These are proximity switches, not the ones that are built into that header array. But those are those are external that we can put those just like on an existing headrest that's not a head array that's or right. on a. Do you use those on a lap tray or when would you think about using something like that? Yeah. So these these are. Um, I'm just going to zoom when, in on those. When you're going to mount hand. them yourself to something, um, so you can have a tray. You can mount these underneath the tray, mm -hmm. and just swiping your hand over them will activate them, even okay. over the tray. So okay. you can have them placed under the tray so that they don't get hit or touched. And all this person has to do is swipe them over that, that, that plastic tray and you can activate these switches. I've done custom things where, uh, so the word array just means a group of switches. Okay. So, uh, I've done a, an array of switches for a person's hand in a position that wasn't, where they didn't have any resistance. They just had their hand in free space. These were arranged around that hand and that person all they had to do was move their hand forward and back and they were able to activate their driving that way. Wow. 
resistance, mm -hmm. just free motion in air, and as long as they came within a, about a quarter of an inch of these switches, they activated drive. Have you just, just occurred to me right now as you're mentioning that, have you ever used that in combination with something like a mobile arm support? Um, no, but I have, I, I've wanted to. I have, uh, I have the idea that this could be really useful um, in many other ways, and I don't think people are really onto it yet. Mm -hmm. I'm think, um, yeah, good. Okay, let's pick this up in another video. Thanks, John.